was willing to forsake her idols, forsake her past life, forsake her people, forsake everything, and return with Naomi. No matter what the circumstances was, she was willing to go on. That's the way every man that comes to Christ must first be willing, regardless. I would like to tell us people, oh, you're going to prosper and be a rich man now, and God's going to bless you, you ain't going to have no sickness. I don't promise them that, because God doesn't promise them that. I say, if you're really born again in your heart, I don't care how rough the road gets, you'll still hold on to God's unchanging hand. No matter what it lays before me, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go. Hallelujah. As long as he goes, that's all necessary. And she returned. And oh, the picture now, Ruth, the Gentile church just coming in, and Neoma, the Jewish church, coming back. And notice, when they turned and went, got back to the homeland, they came in just in barley season. Now, anyone knows what barley season was. It's Pentecost, the first fruit. How the Gentile church was brought in under the wings of Almighty God at Pentecost. The Gentile church, the bride. And when she returned, it was barley season. Ruth said, I'll go where you go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. Amen. There's the real decision. Lord, I'll take you as my Savior. If the Bible says repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then I'll do. If the Bible said I must receive the Holy Ghost, then I'll do. If the Bible tells me Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, then I'll believe. I'll take the Bible and God for what he's wrote and what he is. I don't know what anybody else says. There's the real Ruth. She made her decision. She had to either go back or go forward. We stand on that same ground this morning. Go back or go forward. Don't no, never go back. Let's go forward. On into the promised land they went. Into the land of strange people. Because Elijah knew that anything that he touched was blessed because the Spirit of God was on him. But the woman's faith wasn't in the staff, it was in the prophet. I like her determination. She said, as the Lord lives and your soul never dies, I'll not leave you. We tonight could hold on to God's representative like that. If you could tell the Holy Spirit tonight, as sure as you are the immortal Spirit of God, you give me a promise in the Bible of my healing and I'm going to hold on till I see something happen. There would be miracles taking place. The lame would be j jumping and running and the the doctors of Los Angeles would be surprised tomorrow to see their patients healed and well. If we could just take a hold of God's agent. God's agent then was Elijah. God's agent today is the Holy Spirit. Hold on to it. When you ever come in contact and you feel the Holy Spirit on you, then hold on to it. I'll not leave you. Stay with it like Jacob did when he wrestled with the angel. I'm going to hold on till you bless me and give me the things that I'm desiring. Would it be a wonderful revival? Break out in Answers Temple. All up and down the coast here. If the people that strike here tonight and those that are listening in on the air would take that attitude towards the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm going to stay with you until I find out the thing that I want to know.
And Elijah seen he had her on his hands. There was nothing else to do but go with her. And if you'll just stay with the Holy Spirit, stay on his hands. He loves you well enough to come to you and bless you. And say he did then, stay on his hands. Don't you remember Jesus teaching about the unjust judge? I said, I fear neither God or man, but the woman torments me day and night, crying after me. How much more will God give them the Holy Spirit who cry after Him day and night? We've got faith to believe that God can do it and will do it. Let's take a hold of it and hold on. Just don't let it go. Stay right with it. Don't come now, come ten minutes later, hour later, two weeks later, a month later. No matter when it comes, I got a hope and I'm going to stay with it. And then when Ella Ezer got his camels together and tucked the journey, then he come to a place to where he had to make another decision. And that decision was whether he was going to use his own judgment or whether he was going to trust God's judgment. And that's going to come to each one of us before we leave this building tonight. Especially you people here that's sick and afflicted. It's, you're forced to a place. And Eliezer, after he had got to the gate of this city, now was he going to take his own intellectuals to try to pick out perhaps what he thought to be the most suitable wife for his master's son's wife? And was he going to use his own judgment? Could he go into the city? And look around and find the most attractive woman or what he thought would his own self would be the the best for him and I think Eliezer made a grand decision when he said he would trust God for it now you're going to be forced to the same thing are you after these about 12 or 13 nights of constantly moving of the Holy Spirit, proving by His Word, showing His visible signs that the Messiah was prophesied that would do in these days before the destruction of the world. Every signpost pointing to it. And now are you going to trust tonight when you are prayed for your own intellectual thinking are you going to trust it to God I believe and I'm trusting that you are going to put it in the hands of God make your decision now that it's going to be God's wisdom that you're going to trust not your own thinking If you'll do that, you'll never go wrong. He did not hesitate to do this work for me. My kinsman redeemer, he bought for me.